Hello, everybody. My name is Craig, and I'm going to introduce you to a very, very powerful software simulation suite called Robot Studio from ABB Robotics. This is probably one of the most powerful simulation programs in the entire world for simulating robot factory systems, individual robots, multiple robots. It has physics. It has the ability to simulate on screen and download the robot simulation to an actual robot uh, to prove your design. Now, I'm going to start right now by giving you the basic exploration of this Robot Studio environment. Uh, so we'll have a quick look at the Robot Studio and some commonly used functions. First thing we want to do is open up a, an existing station uh, to explore. So if you move to open, uh, your instructor would lead you to where the stations actually are located. In this case, uh, my station is called Exploring. So I'll select a Storing, Exploring, and the station shows up there. We open up that station, and in a moment you see the uh, Robot Studio environment with the station in the middle and a number of uh, uh, menus and things uh, showing up in the screen. So let's have a look at these uh, windows one at a time. We're going to start at this up this upper area here. It's called the uh, Quick Bar, Quick Access Toolbar. Uh, we can take any item down here in, on the main toolbar, right-click on them, and add them to the Quick Access Toolbar, and they show up. Uh, for, uh, well, obviously for a more uh, immediate access. I can also customize my quick access toolbar this way. So there's my browse for components I just added. Uh, let's say I wanted to put teach target there too. I can add that in and you notice teach target now shows up on my, on my quick access toolbar. I can also remove these items just as easily. Below that, we have a series of tabs, file, home, modeling, simulation, and so on. Uh, the file tab is the most obvious one. It's used for opening and closing, saving stations, uh, looking at recent stations, creating new stations. We can print things out, share them. We can go online, uh, we, and we can also access help from the, uh, from the file menu. The home screen is the most common screen, and this is the one where we can actually create stations from scratch. Um, we can create paths. Uh, we can do graphical programming in the station. Uh, it's, um, it's a very, very powerful station, a very powerful tab. The modeling tab is used for creating and grouping components. Uh, we can create all kinds of shapes and solid surfaces. We can do measurements in the station. Um, and most functions of a 3D CAD program are located in here. We can also in, uh, create tools. We can do smart components. We can do uh, conveyors, mechanisms, all sorts of stuff like that in the modeling tab. It's also possible to create simulations in SolidWorks, um, parts in SolidWorks, and bring them in through the modeling tab and use them in your robot studio. Uh, the part should be saved in the uh, SolidWorks as a SAT uh, file, .sat. Once your modeling is all completed, we can go to simulations. And here we can, uh, we can control, monitor, we can set up, we can record simulations, we can configure simulations, time them, um, all of those features. The controller tab here is useful for working with system parameters and configuring between uh, setting up relations. So we can actually add robot controllers in here and we can take our programs that we created in simulation and move them into our actual robot controller. We can also change the parameters in a real robot controller from here. We can, we can choose a controller of an existing robot and then control all of its settings from Robot Studio here. Rapid, Rapid is the name of the programming language used by ABB Robotics. Uh, and this is a tab that allows us to edit or write brand new Rapid programs or debug existing programs. Add-ins are used when, uh, when you have special features you've bought in Robot Studio to apply to your robot. Add-ins such as arc welding, perhaps, or a painting robot. Um, these add-ins can be um, moved into Robot Studio and edited and modified here. Occasionally, you'll get another tab shows up to the right of these other tabs called Modify. And this is a contextual tab, and it's only used occasionally. It's used when certain programs need to have an extra functionality. So that's where the Modify tab comes in. 
If you go back to home, you can see now we have uh, this window right here as the layout and the path and target window. So if you choose layout, you can see all the elements of our, of our simulation showing up down here. Click on fence, you can see the fence highlights over here. Click on man, you can see the man highlights down here. So we can select all the individual parts of our, simu of our, of our model. Uh, you can also click on the parts themselves. So if I click on forklift in the actual graphics, I can see forklift is highlighted. Click on floor, you can see floor is highlighted. The paths and targets uh, show you all kinds of uh, information about the uh, program data, such as tool data, work objects, targets, paths, uh, things like that that's used in your simulations. So that's your paths and targets. Down here is the output and the simulation watch. Now this is monitoring your virtual controller all the time and it, it produces messages if your robot can't reach something or if there's some kind of an error or a fault or when something's been saved and it's, the save is complete. All that information shows up in your, in your output window and your simulation watch window. Down here at the bottom is your active toolbar. This active toolbar down here uh, shows templates and parameters like the speed and the, the, the zone data of the robots themselves uh, when you, that are used when you create the move command. So here we see right now it's doing a move linear, uh, velocity of 1,000 millimeters per second, a zone of 100 millimeters using tool zero. Your documents window up here, this allows you to search and browse for files and to load them into the station. So it's sort of a, a document handler here. Way down at the bottom, occasionally you'll see in the lower right corner, it's not visible now, but occasionally you'll see a controller status bar. It's usually a green light or a red light or a yellow light. And this shows you the active condition of the controller. 